I'm going to give you, the viewer, the ability to watch this whole thing without me yammering away. Then if you want to watch it again, I'm going to play the whole thing with narration. just to show the size of the rocks and as I turn I blow it into the water and it's gone.
again with commentary. These places you see in this video are places that Lonnie and I played over a number of years very close to where we live. We were both very familiar with what to expect when we were in this particular area but things were still constantly changing so from one time to the next you'd have to look over an area pretty well before you just go in and land it. This river would rise and the landscape would completely change after high water. Lonnie and I both ran 31 inch bush wheels up until the day we had the idea of taking the tire that Bill Duncan at Alaskan Bush Wheels was making, the 35 inch Alaskan Bush Wheel. At the time, this 35-inch Alaskan bush wheel was only being made for the Beaver or the Platus Porter. And having him make a lightweight tire, I contacted Bill Duncan and I asked him if he could take that tire from the 65 to 70 pounds it weighed down to 30 pounds. And he did not think so, but he said that he could probably get it in the 40-pound range and I asked him how much it would cost to make a set of tires and he said well that's not the main problem the main problem is there's no wheels available and I said to him well wheels aren't a problem because I can machine my own so why don't you come up with a price for a set of tires and uh, let me know about a week later I had a set of tires sitting on my back porch the US mail had delivered them and I called Bill up and I said, um, how much do I owe you? And he says, try them out, see what you think. If you like them, send me a check for what you'd pay for a set of 31s. And so that's how the 35 inch Alaskan bush wheel came to be. I was the first person to ever run this set of tires. And I actually still have this original set of tires in the attic. If anybody's interested in some memorabilia for their hangar, reach out to me. I'd be willing to sell them. And of course, after I got these 35-inch Alaska bush wheels on the airplane, Lonnie wanted to see how big a rocks they would roll over. So every time we went somewhere, he'd be like, I bet you could land there. And I'd go over and I'd give it a try. Everything always seemed to work out with them. They would roll over just about anything and taking off and landing wasn't really the problem. It was mostly taxiing. They also made hydroplaning easier. They would uh, allow me to get down to a slower speed when hydroplaning and it felt more safe on the water. Since 2005 when I started running these 35 inch bush wheels I have not ran any other tires. So you know, every once in a while people will say, well, why don't you build a lightweight airplane with 31s? Well, I just can't see myself running any tire but a 35 at this point in my life. Just from a safety standpoint, I think the 35 for me is probably twice as safe as running a 31 doing the things I like to do. A lot of people have said, oh, he's setting a bad example. He's uh, showing off. He's doing this and that, and I was doing this way before we were filming it. The only reason we filmed it, actually, was I was doing a show in Alaska, the Airmen Show. I was thinking, you know, maybe there's a, a product here that I can build and sell. So I was building this experimental extended gear for malls for myself at this point, and then the lightweight... Um, 35 inch bush wheels there was no wheels for it so I was building experimental wheels for guys and so I decided to have a booth I waited until the last minute so there wasn't any booths available inside so I was stuck out in the back 40 I got to Alaska and I bought a little 9 inch TV with a built-in DVD player 
and Lonnie and I had gone down to our playground and made a seven minute video and over the two days or three days of the uh, airman show I had people stacked up 20 deep sometimes just trying to see this seven minutes of video that I had made and looped so I was thinking hmm this is interesting and I had a guy come up to me and he's like I bet you could sell a DVD if you made one and that's how the DVD thing started Lonnie and I would have been doing this whether there was ever a video made or not this was just what we were doing for fun this is like dirt biking with an airplane here's a bit of advice though the quickest way to wreck a good airplane is hydroplaning it on water if you don't know what you're doing you can screw it up so fast and be upside down in a river that your head will be spinning. So don't go out and dip your tires in the water unless you're ready to pay for the consequences. I've also been asked from time to time to show the screw ups. To be honest there wasn't very many screw ups while we were making this movie. There were a few and I think I included them in the video Big Rocks Long Props Volume 1 in like the bonus section or something. I built this airplane bushwhacker in 2002 is when I started building it and I finished it and had it flying by 2004. I built it for this purpose. I didn't build it for anything other than to do off airport and I had been flying an M5 with a 235 horse six cylinder engine and I just knew that if I built an airplane like I had been flying but with a bigger wing and lighter and uh, purposely built for what I wanted to do it would do pretty much what a Super Cub would do. Well we're at the end of another one so if you like what you saw hit the subscribe button. <laughs>